everyone today i'm going to be doing a um a short video just called mg three true or i mean three true halloween horror stories with rain sounds i know it halloween ready passed but um nobody's doing today just because um i don't know I'm gonna get all the Halloween stuff over with and get to back to this. I, I didn't, I haven't read to these out the nighttime spooks in a sizzle bot in a long time. Maybe a couple of weeks, a month, I think last since last month. I've been wanting to do one. And so, yeah, before I get into that video, I want to play my, uh, review what I thought about yesterday's episode of Chucky. And I got the, I love it. It was just a, Fantastic episode. I got that I really enjoyed that episode. It definitely be watchable. And I definitely will um we're gonna be watching it today on video. Um I I'm, there's so many twists like a spoiler alert. Uh I wasn't expecting Tiffany well I should have figured this. I don't I didn't really come to my head. I'm sorry I'm eating right now because I get to Right now is the only time I really get to eat and then eat breakfast, so at any right now. Um so oh my, sorry. Right. So, anyways, I thought the episode was really great. I was expecting whenever Jennifer Tilly's body and, and Tiffany's doll and the Tiffany doll. I wasn't expecting that at all. I don't think no one really was, was expecting that, but, um, yeah, I really didn't expect that. Like, a thousand percent I didn't expect that. I should have expected it because, um, at the end of the Steel Chucky, we all saw that Tiffany had that doll with her seal, with it being, um, the act that Chucky did to her, where it split her on the forehead right here. Oh. Uh, here, sorry, the camera's opposite, of course. Like, like right here, I'm trying to hear that. Ew. Like that. I could have done that the entire time, but I didn't do that. But, anyways, it was cut like right here. Um, the Chucky accident, see the Chucky, so I really. I said I expected it, but I didn't. Um, then, of course, Meg, she got killed. I so really was hoping Tiffany wouldn't kill her, but she had no choice to keep her secret, uh, keep herself, uh, but she did a secret. Um, so I kind of get why she did that, but I really wish she, she didn't. It could have worked something out, but then again, I don't think Meg would have do anything to help her, then in a way she would have even had she had to die. So yeah. Then uh the hell what they do to Andy not my not Andy, why'd they do it to him? That is not right Andy oh no, he better not die. He better not kill off Andy that quick. I don't want that. I thought y'all killed off Kyle in last episode. I was not expecting I'm just so happy. I'm like, whoa, I got so happy. Well, I kind of saw her name in the credits, but I thought we were going to show a flashback scene to the child, but I don't know why I thought that, but anyways, I was so happy. And we saw her alive on that episode. I was so surprised, but because I didn't know she did not actually appear. Well, of course, uh, I, I kind of figured, but I didn't know when. But, yeah. So, I don't know. I think Nika is with either Kyle or either with Glenda. Because, and a separate house, or unless they all stay in the same place. I don't know. Because I don't think they want to be where Tiffany will find them eventually. But I don't think Tiffany knows that Kyle took them. Um, I'm, I was surprised with that 
Oh, that's right, but I'm glad I saw that we still had to see a Chucky Glenn and Glenda doll um, and make an appearance on this episode. Um, I knew that bitch from... Uh, yeah, per, yeah, that bitch, bitch. I knew something was off about her. Now, why the hell would they give her, give Caroline that Bell doll if even she knew she was afraid of dolls? I bet anything on the next episode, the Bell doll is attacking Caroline and, uh, I forgot them, or Leslie's mom's name. Both of them. Can kill him. I would try to hurt them. Either way, I know he's attacking to be a whistle. But, mm mm. They did Andy wrong on that part, but I love that episode your way. And the ball chucky. Ooh. I don't know what she cares about anymore. The ball, the ball chucky or that bitch ass therapist. I knew something was wrong for her. Ooh. Ooh. Bitch, I bet that bitch better not kill Andy. That bitch kills her. I'm making sure. Someone just at least make sure to go face plant like like that Michael does when Michael Myers did with that but uh, his doctor smash his head hope that happened to her Lur gruelly kills the f out of her f that bitch anyways let's get into this video and let's watch I believe you hear me complain the entire time what that bitch as there bitch. To Mexico, like tacos al pastor from traditional taquerias, tacos de pollo, or tacos de bistec. Oh, so much, so much. This happened a few years ago on Halloween. I'm 28 years old, and most people in my friend group get together for a Halloween party the weekend of Halloween. On this year, Halloween was on a weeknight, so our party was later in the week. That meant I didn't have anything going on on Halloween. I live in a smaller house and was just planning on hanging out and giving out candy to trick-or-treaters all night. By the time it got to be about 5 o'clock, the first trick-or-treaters arrived. I would say my neighborhood is pretty average. I don't get a crazy number of people, but a steady amount throughout the night. As time went on, the sun set a little after 6 o'clock or so. It was around this time when I was in my living room and heard a knock on the front door. It was a strong and powerful knock. Most people rang the doorbell, so I really noticed this. I was a little bit slow to get up and get to the door, and by the time I did, nobody was there. Mm -mm. I felt bad, because some kid must have missed out on getting candy from me, and I meant to answer the door a little bit sooner, but slow hour I was the time average. I don't get a crazy number of people, but a steady amount throughout the night. As time went on, the sun set a little after 6 o'clock or so. It was around this time when I was in my living room and heard a knock on the front door. It was a strong and powerful knock. Most it's people rang the doorbell, the so I really noticed this. I was a little bit slow to get up and get to the door, and by the time I did, nobody was there. I felt bad, because some kid must have missed out on getting candy from me, and I meant to answer the door a little bit sooner. I looked around to see if I could see anybody walking down the street, but I didn't. Wait. After that- Wait, it says to call the time, unless it's the next day? What? Wait, you said, he said 6 o'clock. 6 o'clock is where, unless it's the morning, and yeah, that would be a little weird in the morning. But I, I never got in circuit theater 6 o'clock in the morning on November 1st. That's just so weird. Wow. You know, it's like, at night, like at p.m., like, that's normal. That's not, you should actually have candy still. This, normally sugar cheers are there till like 6 to 10. I don't think they will go over. Well, I don't know. Who knows? But anyway, this is back to the video. That, I went back inside. I got a few more kids at the door over the next hour or so. Once again, there was another loud knock on the door after that. I was much quicker to answer the door, but again, nobody was there. Now I was beginning to think that I was being pranked or something. When it got later in the night, it happened yet again. It was the only time people knocked on the door, too. Everybody else would just ring the doorbell, 
so I knew when I heard the knock, whoever had done it would be gone by the time I answered. The last trick-or-treaters came by at about 8.45 or so, and by 9 o'clock, things were really quiet. At that point, I turned my lights off, signaling that I wouldn't want any more trick-or-treaters. It was about 9.30 when I heard the knocking yet again. I ran to the door and opened it as fast as I could. Still, nobody was there. I was pretty annoyed by this now. Who would have time to repeatedly knock on my door over the span of three or four hours just to run away before I could answer? I left my house and took a couple of steps out into my yard looking all around. I didn't see anybody. I called out asking who was there, but of course got no response. I shook my head and started walking back into my house. When I reached my front step, I suddenly heard a noise in the bushes directly in front of my house and to my right. When I looked, I was just in time to see somebody emerge from the bush and was headed straight for me. This person was a grown man and I had never seen him before. I had maybe 10 feet between him and the front door. I ran as fast as I could, pretty much just as a reaction. When I reached the door, I swung it back open and got inside. I closed the door right behind me and it closed right on the man's arm who was trying to get inside after me. This was just my screen door, so it didn't hurt him too bad, but it was enough to cause him to remove his arm from the door and back outside. This gave me enough time to slam the larger door and lock it, right before he opened the screen door and tried coming into my house. I screamed that I was calling the police, and then got my phone out of my pocket to do so. I looked out the window, and I watched the man running away through my yard and then down the street, but I called the police anyways. When they arrived, I told them all I could, and this was thankfully enough to keep the man away, because I never saw him again. You don't call the cops until, no, you don't say you're going to call the cops. If you tell them you don't call the cops, they'll run away. I would have just not said anything and said, I'm, uh, I would have just been calling the cops already. And, uh, I don't know. I would call the cops right away. I've already been saying it. Okay. Damn, it's already past 10. Some bitch who comes in to my door and just don't say anything. I'm calling the damn cop right away. I find it about the second time. Here's the first time, I can tell it's a prank, but the second time, no bitches don't do that to me. I'll call the cops about any messing with my heart. I'm making sure that bitch gets caught right away. Uh uh, don't make that to me. Okay. Tis the season two hashtag mad. You took it really far. La 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 la. Wait, is this uh, hashtag it? twinning? Is that what this is? Hashtag sorry, not sorry. I'm making the rules. Alright, that means that we the ad. Okay. When I was in college, Halloween was always a big time for parties and such. During my junior year, I shared a house with a couple of my roommates who were some girls I had met and become good friends with during my freshman year. All of us had a bunch of our friends over to our place for a Halloween party, which was a total of about 20 or 30 people. Our house was small, but we did have two floors, but it was basically a typical old house you would find in a college neighborhood. Our university was pretty big, so I'm sure there were a bunch of other parties going on that night as well. We all wore costumes, and I recognized most of the people, even though they were wearing disguises. At about 10 p.m., most of us wanted to go out to the local bars in the college town. We all started to leave, but there was this one guy who I had no idea who he was. He was dressed as the Joker from Batman, but he had on a mask instead of painting his face, so I couldn't recognize him at all. I went over and asked him who he was, but he didn't answer me. He just kind of looked at me and then sort of walked away. There was music playing and other people talking, so maybe he didn't hear me is what I thought. Eventually, I went upstairs to get my wallet and keys, and when I came down, most of the people were gone, aside from my roommates and I, who were all set to leave. We left the house and locked up. Then we were able to walk to the bars because they were only a few blocks away. I was out for maybe two or three hours. I remember I think it was a Thursday, and I had class the next morning, so I decided to go back a little after midnight. I didn't want to be out too late, and my roommate Liz and I walked back together. Our other roommates said they would come back later. When we got back, I unlocked the door and went inside first. As soon as I did, I heard a noise from inside. I realized quickly that it was coming from the inside of the closet we had just in front of the stairs. I walked over and opened the door. When I did, 
I saw the guy who was dressed as a Joker, but his mask wasn't on now. I could clearly see that he was an older looking guy, like in his 50s, and I had no idea who he was. Before any of us had a chance to do anything, I slammed the door back and immediately ran away. Liz saw me running, and we both went outside. I called the police, and we began walking right down the street in the direction we had came from. We later went back when the police were there, and we were told that the man was now gone. Our entire house was searched, but they- Here's the thing. We close the door, lock that bitch inside, make sure everything's above it, call the cops, and when they get out, and when they poop all that stuff, they get arrested. That's what I would have done. I don't let that bitch escape. Like I said, last video, last uh, story. That bitch will not escape from me. I'm a... Mm. I might not... I may not lift up, but I am strong as hell. I know about to take uh, shit from my bitch. Mm -mm. They couldn't find him. I guess he had been able to get away. I'm not sure how he knew to go into our house, but apparently he had hidden in the closet while we were leaving. It's really creepy that he was hiding in our house alone the whole time we were gone. We must have caught him off guard when we got back and he went to quickly hide in the closet. I'm glad I heard him or else who knows what would have happened. Uh, I don't know, we will kill y'all. That's what he was done. This story happened many years ago when I was a kid. I think I was 11 years old. I remember that for Halloween every year, I would usually go trick-or-treating with some friends, and then we would hang out afterwards. On this year, I was planning to trick-or-treat with my friend Tyler, and then he was going to come over and hang out at my house afterwards. My house was sort of big, and we had a cool basement with a big TV for playing video games or watching movies. We also talked to our friend Alex at school earlier in the day, and he was planning on coming over that night, but he had to go trick-or-treating with his sister, so he wasn't going with us. When the night arrived, Tyler and I went all around our neighborhood and beyond it to the surrounding neighborhoods. We were out until about 9, and we got tons of candy. Then we walked back to my house, where my parents were. Tyler and I went down into the basement and played some video games while we waited oh, for Alex to get there. This was before the days where every kid had a cell phone, so we didn't know exactly when he would be there. We left the back door to the basement unlocked for him to come through, though. My parents were watching a movie upstairs, and we were down in the basement for about 20 minutes or so, when we heard the back door open and shut. It was around the corner from the room we were in, and we assumed that it was Alex arriving. I called out to where we were and told him to join us. However, I didn't hear Alex respond. I got up and walked out to the hallway near the back door. Nobody was there. It was weird because I was so sure that I had heard the door open and shut. I went back and asked Tyler if he had heard the door, and he told me yes, he heard the exact same thing that I had. I looked all around the basement once more, but nobody was there. I thought maybe Alex had opened the door, but then decided to go around to the front or something, and I went back to playing video games with Tyler. Only five minutes or so after this, I thought I heard somebody walking around in the hallway, and then I heard another door open and shut. The basement living room area where we were was completely out of vision of the back door and hallway with some guest bedrooms in it. It sounded like one of the bedroom doors had shut. I got up and walked over, and when I did, I saw one of the doors was in fact shut. I couldn't quite remember exactly if it had been open or closed before, but I was pretty sure it was open. I was sort of creeped out now and went back to tell Tyler about it. Just then, I heard the back door open and shut again. Then, I heard Alex's voice. I walked out and saw him standing in the doorway. He asked me what was wrong when he saw the look on my face. I didn't say anything until all three of us were in the living room together, and then we told him all about what had happened. I decided I would go up and find my parents and tell them about everything, but before I did, we once again heard the back door open and then close. I walked out and saw the bedroom door that had been shut was now wide open. I ran to the back door and locked it quickly, and then ran upstairs and found my parents. My dad came downstairs and looked around, then he went outside. After doing so, he came back in and said he couldn't see anything that looked out of sorts. I never saw who was in the house that night, but it creeps me out to think about it every time. Yeah, it's a big kind of true story about the kids that were seen. The last one, uh, I really cannot say much about it because it, he said he didn't have much technology back then. 
It was not, well, you said it was like seven. Sorry, I saw a car, and it looks like it was about to hit the other car behind it. Sorry, I got distracted. Anyways, um, okay, anyway, uh, Oh, I'll say that, this, like I said, it's the first story I won't get too mad about because they had no cell phones back then. He said it was like 70 years old, so I'm not mad about that part. But they did do some, I would have called my, if I was in that type of situation, I would have called my parents. Uh, and I don't see anyone come through the back door to whatever they throw out at. They said they heard it at the door and no one um, responded back. So that's the first mistake. If someone don't talk back, that means something someone else is inside the house. It's because I know damn well that if I've no one's making a noise, I don't see anything or not. Yeah, nothing. You, Mean with their mouth open, like talking or gibberish. I know damn well they ain't someone I know because I know people. I know people that actually talk the words. Like I can tell when someone who's speaking or who's doing it because. Uh, I think the one time this actually happened to me. I th I thought one time my sister came back home, but it wasn't. But I think it was just although it's a. It's a I don't know. I don't know what, really what it was. It was like one time I was at uh, uh, my house and I was in the restroom and I thought my sister was, uh, came back inside but she was, went to uh, pick up my mom from work. Well, my mom can't drive but she would go uh, with my grandma to pick up my mom from work and uh, um, uh, I thought she actually did come inside and I heard like the refrigerator open, I think, or someone walk into the dining room and her voice is sounded similar to my sister. And I, uh, a little later, I came out, I went outside, we had a little later, I thought it was my sister, like a hundred percent. I thought it's my sister, but it wasn't. But I had the same voice, same everything. And I felt like someone was inside, so I wasn't, I didn't have a, an like, uncomfortable feeling, I guess, but it just startled me whenever I found out was n no one was around, not even, no one was inside the house. Like, um, like I heard the back door open one time, and that was a sister, and I thought it was a sister, because, like I was saying, I heard the back door open, uh, I mean the front door open, and I thought it was a sister, because, and, I, and again, I wouldn't say that, I should have, I figured it's how my sister would let him go outside and uh, without a uh, switch with her, like a, a whipping switch because my, my little puppy, uh, my sister's puppy, she has, she's, she is very hyperactive. He's super hyper and jumps on people that comes around him, but he thinks he, he, they're going to play with him. And she has always had to get a switch because she, she's afraid of dogs. No matter what, she's my oldest sister is afraid of dogs. She's always been afraid since my uh, aunt's first husband. Well, I guess it was her late husband. When I, well, not late, like, but she's not dead. I, wish, well, I, can't, I don't want her to wish someone is dead. They said that one person from Chucky, I wish he was dead. That bitch, not real quiet, of course, but it's so, I hope she died. Brutally killed, like I said. Anyway, it's a different topic. So, <laughs> other than she brought a dog in the house one time, it chased after her in the restroom, and she, of course, locked the door before it had been inside. And ever since then, it was like over maybe 10 to 12 years ago that happened. And ever since she was always a pair of dogs and stuff. And she never really got over that fear. Well, she did like our, uh, my aunt's dog, which we had, she had to give it away because it, was, it killed her cat, two of her cats. And, um, she liked that dog. She wasn't scared to be near it, but because it wouldn't jump on her, it was just, it was, 
like very chill, didn't wouldn't uh fight anyone like that, that type of way, but uh, anyways, I looked up my sister was inside the house. I even looked because I uh I thought she went to the room because she always goes into the room to get her phone or a charger or anything. Um and I came out like a few minutes later, there was no sign of anyone, not even um like anything. My sister said she never came back inside, she only went outside. She, she went outside and never came back inside until they uh came back. They came back from picking up my mom. So I was I not I kinda of startled in a way when I heard that because who I don't know if uh I if it was like a spirit or something trying to um invite me to go with them, like invite but I know this one thing that it that will trick you thinking um that your one of your relative is speaking inside the house to get you lure you inside where they're at because my friend told me about that and I actually believed that because I heard stories, I heard I watched videos of that that was happening, so I'm glad I didn't walk like go towards this noise right away because the good thing I was still in the Russian, like something I don't know if something made me still want to use the Russian, stay in the Russian a little longer. But I know I wasn't afraid to go out. For sure I wasn't as scared. Until afterwards, I figured I was, I found out it was not my sister inside the house. Anyways, the second story was, um, he said I was not called the cop, he, he said not that he was not called the cops. I know, wait, the second story is a person in the closet. Like, he said, well, not the closet. I, I would have done that. He said, done that. You, it, Oh my god, I, I'm in college and uh, I would have thought that idea when I was like, uh, not young because I, I probably won't even think about that type of stuff by the way. I'll probably be more scared to even think of that, but. The other thing, I wouldn't be, I'd be scared, but I wouldn't be uh, that scared to not lock the door because I want to lock that bitch in jail. I don't care. I basically tried to, uh, was stealing, uh, destroying, uh, inside my house, unattended, unwanted, with a creepy ass costume on. So, yeah, so that was a mistake, but anyways, I still liked it. I liked all of them. And the first one, he said, of not went outside. The first, he said, not went outside to see what it got. Um, in the first place, he said, this called the cops the second time he heard the noise, the door, um, knocking because you put to ring the bell for Halloween if you have a, a doorbell because and I think people would just uh, trick or treat um or something like that I don't know I have, I have never had anyone come to my house never so that's my that's why I really don't know I've been trick or treating before, but I never really said any of that. I just, because the people outside were just, there were always people outside the door with candy. So I never really had to go up to the door and knock at the door and say trick or treat. Um, so yeah, it's, I, I do like this video. Like, comment, subscribe if you want to see more videos like this and what videos you want to see to do. Um, Okay, oh, everyone had a good day today, and I'll see y'all on the next video. So, later.